How can a tattoo artist who's been tattooing for three years be better than a tattoo artist that's been tattooing for 14? Well, does it take time to get better and improve as an artist? Yes, it does. But as an artist that's been able to accomplish what I've accomplished with just six years of tattooing, I realized that the difference isn't information, the difference is implementation. Most of the information I'm giving is already out there. You just need to be keen on applying. So hopefully the people that I'm critiquing in this video and giving advice to, you may be in that similar situation and that advice I give to them can help you. But if you're in a situation where you feel like you need specific advice, then I do paid coaching. So feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in something like that. But let's get into the video. Carlos has been tattooing for a year now, on and off because of the full-time job. He's in a Bronc V12 with an adjustable stroke. Stroke, stroke goes from 2.9 to 4. This is great, man. Your shading is dope. Can't really critique that, especially you being like your pixel control is great. Like your patterns are very clean. If you're doing this on and off, imagine if you just tattooed for 15 minutes every day. So I tell artists is that like it's more muscle memory. You're training your body more than anything else. So if you were able to, I don't care if it's three minutes, as long as you can do it every day, just keep your hands hot. You're going to improve a lot faster versus if you just tattooed a bunch within, you know, a week or, you know, tattoo one day out of the week for six hours, eight hours, and then don't rest. It's way better if you do a little bit every day. Just do it more. That's all you really need to do. You're just going to improve naturally. You're a natural. So, okay, we got Alex here. They've been tattooing for a little more than a year now. They use the Bishop Wand Packer with a 4.2 and a Bishop Shader with a 3.5 stroke. Shading looks great. I mean, you have a great understanding of light source. It's darker here. You have it open here, this curvature, like right here in that shadow. So it's it's giving the illusion, so all you're doing is creating illusions with tattooing. So it's giving the illusion that this is round, and that's what you want to do. So you're doing a good job with that, based off what I can see with that one. Yeah, that's great. That looks shiny. It looks soft. I would say maybe, I don't know if that was your reference, the transition here was kind of sharp. It's not very smooth. Like, you did a great job over better over here, you know, and it's softer here. It looks shiny. So, and... Given the fact of how small those areas are, just being a year in and you're doing stuff like this, that's amazing. Same thing here. Maybe a little bit more tone there, like, like there's a curve, like right here. If you shaded all that area, left this open, that would give that illusion of the shape of the cheek a little bit more, kind of like what you did here. Like all that tone right there, that's great. Um, and then there's a bit of, I can see the transition from the darkest tone to that mid tone to the skin tone. So you did a good job there. Just keep at it and doing what you're doing because you're doing amazing for a year and this is great work all right eugene so you're about coming up on three years of tattooing in november a happy tattoo anniversary it looks like you're using the og bishop wand at 3.2 stroke okay so the shader you have this on and use the 3.2 there as well okay trying to achieve a more realistic look with your work feels like the work's still too hard and illustrative right off that i will say this is a tough one because you got whenever you're not doing a portrait and someone has patterns on their face it's going to be really hard to use the shading to get structure and the and the lines to follow the shape of the face and not interfere with the tones that you want because like if you put white here then it creates the illusion that light's hitting it so if light's hitting this here it's sticking out further than where it's dark right next to it so with it with this one yeah that, that's a tough piece but i'd say you still did a good job with the eyes the eyes look nice and realistic it's not like super sharp hard lines or none of them um i would say maybe in the eyelid right there because that if the light's coming all the way through it to there that doesn't typically happen with eyes i don't know if it was there in the reference but that's some it's all tiny details that make all the difference just need a little bit of your mid-tone in more. So you're laying in your, your blacks and your dark tones in really good. You probably just need a little bit more mid-tone. It looks red here like you had a white there. Um, especially if you're dealing with melanated skin, you're going to want to use white as little as possible because the melanin is going to see it as a foreign entity and try to turn it back brown 
like the rest of the skin. So that's why I try to more so depend on open pots, spots of the skin to look like highlights. And then in small areas, like say on the lip right here, I would put some whites in there just so it looks sharp, but I'm not going to depend on it to make it look brighter. Because the I find the more you white that you put in an area, the less likely it's going to heal well. But generally when you're doing something like this, I would try to get lay in the tones to get the structure of the face first and then go in with a darker tone and lay those patterns down that are going to be on the face. Because you're putting whites here to try to separate things. But what it's doing is it's taking away from the overall contour and structure of the face because whenever something is brighter, then you're creating the illusion that something's protruding forward. So, you know, you know, the chin will protrude forward here, but not necessarily all the way over here, you see. So you got white here. Um, you know, white here right over the lip makes sense, but you want to be very minimal with that. Um, then you have it in that spot here, which like doesn't necessarily serve you as far as making the overall structure of the face. Study your references a little bit more and just try to find the little details you're missing that's taking away from the realness effect of it. But you still have the soft edges. You're not throwing any hard lines in there that's taken away from the realistic effect of your tattoos. I think you just need to work on those light tones right here. Like I would have used light tone here. So that way right here, that's just open skin. And that looks like the highlight rather than having to use white. Okay, so we have Javon here. He's been currently tattooing for a year uh, using the Bishop Juan shader at 3.5 stroke. So yeah, it's still new to tattooing, finding the shading the most difficult. Also the background, trying to get a lighter, smoother tone. That way I'm not just relying on the dark ink to make the picture stand out. Um, give your tattoos some more room to breathe. Because I think you're, you're, what you're doing is kind of the opposite of what the other artists were doing. Most people were lacking that mid-tone. What you're doing is would be the opposite is where you're oversaturating. So you want to give your tattoos a little bit more room to breathe. I think that's why things are coming out dark. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of contrast, but just knowing where to leave that open skin so that way things pop and you can get something to not look as muddy. So, you know, just like how you had it open here, I would have had that side maybe open too. Um, just like you did here on the chin. Like on the chin, you did a great job. And then this looks like a lighter tone here. So whatever you did here, you just need a little bit more of that. Maybe play around with lighter washes. I don't know if you're using your set wash, set like wash sets or making your own washes. But if you're using a wash set, try diluting it a little bit, playing around with it and seeing if you can get more comfortable taking time and layering again those lighter tones. So yeah, I would say do, do some more exercises with like lighter tones so that you can get more acquainted with it and learn to build them up so that way you can work your way down to the darker instead of being stuck at the dark tone that you're immediately laying. Play around with those light tones a little bit more. Um, if you have a wash set, try to dilute that ink a little bit more. Or if you're making your own washes, try to make a lighter wash and play around with that some more. But you're doing a good job, so keep at it. Giovanni here, they're in Jamaica. They've been tattooing for two and a half years. They're using the Mass Full Pro. Um, adjustable stroke to 1.4 to 4.2. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, you did shading with a liner there for that tighter area, which is a good call. It's a smaller area, um, a little bit harder to do with the mag, especially given all these like uneven corners that you can see you went in this direction with the mag. You know, you were going down that way. If you would have crossed this way too, with like a, you know, 70%, not a full black, that will kind of eliminate the pattern that you can see. So I would say try to go in more multiple directions when you're doing that. You can see you did the same thing here, like you were just going this way. Um, I don't know what voltage you run at, so maybe lower your voltage so it gives you more time in smaller areas. You can also say here, it looks like you had some trouble saturating the colors. Here, most people saturate in small little circles and fill out that area until they, you know, until they fill out the area and then they move up. So, you know, do two little, two to three little circles and you move up. I like to saturate with um, pendulum, which is a bit unorthodox, but I know some other artists that do it. Uh, the yellow, uh, try to avoid yellow on melanated skin because it tends to either fade completely or once it does heal, it's too close to 
someone's undertones of their skin. So if you think about a color having a filter over it, if you put brown filter over yellow, it just really looks brown. So if you're going to do yellow, you need to put orange next to it and, min and minimize the amount of yellow you put in there. Otherwise, it's not going to be very visible once it heals. And see, that one's clean. This is this is good. You pack, you're good at packing black. I noticed that too. Um, I don't know if that was your intention to just taper off with the great black, no mid-tone in between. I see it looks like you may have done some here. But um, yeah, again, go in a different direction. Try it once you're on the way. Cross hatch and you know, go that way so you can kind of like get rid of that, those edges. But I wouldn't do it with black. Go with like a lighter, like a mid-tone. That'll create that transition because if you're already faded off here, if you go into it with a mid-tone and fade off that, that's going to create that paper where it just fades to the skin tone. Okay, well, here's been tattooing for three years, achieving smooth shading, giving my tattoo more depth and better understanding. Bishop Wan liner, five milliliter stroke. Yeah, so I'd say first and foremost, you're probably going to want to get another machine with a lower stroke. It's going to get hard, harder to make smooth tones with something with a high stroke like that because it's hard hitting and it's irritating the skin more. So you can't do as many layers to get that smooth shading that you want. This is a great tattoo. I like this one a lot. Did a good job capturing that contrast with the blacks. Like here, I see the tone difference and then those little white highlights. As it heals, I'm sure it'll make the whole thing pop. Um, also, the thing I can see you're using CPL filters, and I know that kind of lightens things um, versus how they look in real life. But the good thing about CPL filters is that it kind of exposes the tattoo so you can really see everything you're doing. Again, you're probably going to need a shorter stroke machine because that's going to be really hard to get that soft shading. Definitely get your hands on something with a lighter hit so that way you can have an easier time building up those tones. Because, yeah, I can see here like your pixel control, all the little dots, like you have some relatively consistent direction with your tattooing. But, yeah, get a softer machine. That we can build up those layers and stay more consistent without irritating the skin as much. Okay. But good job. I like this. This is clean. You got a good understanding of light source, but you're doing a great job. So oddly here, this one's a bit harder to explain since the issue that happened is lining has been my biggest issue for some reason. Finding appropriate angles where I can comfortably make my lines, and I have also had a problem in composing on the body in an efficient way. So goal when you're putting on a tattoo, especially a bigger one, I always want the focal point to end up on the bigger extremities of the body. So up here on the shoulder, I always want a focal point to land somewhere up there um, because that's the peak of the shoulder. I wouldn't want a focal point right there because we end up with a bunch of space up there that's either going to have to be background shading or something that's not the focal point. So we want it to be up here so we can utilize all that space up there. And then usually if they're going for a full sleeve, a secondary focal point is going to be down here below. After we, you know, the space, the piece up here is taking up a majority of the upper arm space. We're going to have another focal point down here. Um, that's the rule I follow with pretty much any other part of the body with the halves, the thighs. It's the similar thing. You want the focal point to be up top, a bigger one, and you get room for a smaller one at the bottom and maybe a couple of smaller things on the edges in the background. And then as far as line work, that's going to be hard to explain without being present with you. It could be just the way you're holding the machine and you're not stabilizing yourself properly. So when you're not tattooing someone, it's better to experiment on fake skin and find different ways to hold the machine. Uh, but yeah, for something like that, I would recommend talking to another artist that you can get in person with or keep at it. I like your shading. Your shading's good. Looks like everything's healing well. I would say maybe just add another mid-tone to kind of add more structure to your tattoo, but all in all, good job.